Hello! Games of Nations! It is me, Fred Pierce. Never gonna get tired of saying that. <laughs> so, we begin our series of point and click games. We're gonna continue Hector at some point, but uh, I thought I'd start uh, doing a series properly and uh, starting with one of the first uh, point and click games. That I played and uh, I think one of the most classic series of all time in the point and click genre. It is one of the first games to feature the Templars and inspired books such as the Da Vinci Code uh, by Dan Brown and um, other titles such as Assassin's Creed. All that comes from this game so without further ado let's begin. Um, one thing I will warn you is that the first scene is probably going to be loud, so if you're using earphones, uh, I will give you a warning of eargasms. So here we go. Paris, city of love, romance, and dreams. So they say. I used to say it too, but ever since that day, the day of the murder, I've always associated my beloved Paris with death. I was at home having a bath when my editor called. Collard, get your ass over to the Palais Royal now. You got an interview. With Pierre Carchon. Yes, the Pierre Carchon. No photos, so leave your gear at home. He has for you personally. Don't ask me why. Anyhow, this could be big, so if he makes a pass, don't forget. Just smile, say yes, and keep taking notes. So charming, and so very apt. Pierre Carchon was a media king, a national hero, and one of the most infamous adulterers in Europe. He and his wife Imelda were just one step down from royalty. Whoa, I hate mimes, but unless you humor them, they don't go away. Here I was, the palace of the media king and the ice cream. I pressed the doorbell and set in motion a chain of events which would change my life forever. Yes, what is it? Madame, my name is Nico Collard. I'm here to see Monsieur Carchon. Come up, we're on the first floor. Madame Carchon, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yes, I'm sure. The Ice Queen was certainly living up to her reputation. Oh. Will you be staying for the interview? Mademoiselle, I know little of my husband's business affairs, and I care even less. I certainly have no intention of watching him pour over yet another pretty little journalist. Pretty? You're too kind, madame. Ah, the talented and very beautiful Mademoiselle Collard. Such a pleasure to meet you at last. Monsieur Carchon, I am honored. Oh, I'm sure you are. Call me Pierre, please. But I do not flatter you idly. I was a friend of your father. He was a great man. My father? He never mentioned. He and I were very close. And then his death. So tragic. I must... Imelda, your damned cat's in my study again. Another Ming vase, I suppose. 
Excuse me for one moment, my dear girl. You journalists are getting younger each year. Perhaps it's the rest of the world getting older, madame. That was no cat. My God, what? Monsieur Carson! Right. A murder. He's dead. I must call the police. You'd better stay here. There was a man. It was the mime. Do you think he... Well, I believe we can rule out suicide, don't you? <laughs> no wonder they called her the Ice Queen. She would have been top of my list of suspects if I hadn't seen the attacker myself. <laughs> and if I hadn't come across a couple of murders just like this already. One of the most important men in Europe murdered. And here was I, Nico Coulard, alone at the scene of the crime. Should I wait for the cops? Or start my own investigation? <laughs> no-brainer. It was a no-brainer. Right. So, we begin. Oh, blimey. Right, so... Let's look at Lovely Liberty. So let's recap. Okay, so there's a murder. Let's go. Let's have a look at the body first. What do you think? Mimes and guns don't usually go together, but I had an idea that this was no ordinary mime. I'd come across this murderer before and written about him. The costume killer, at least that's what I called him. <laughs> right, so let's have a look. Some people hate searching corpses for clues. Me, I'm okay with it. Reminds me of an old boyfriend. Enough of that now, Miss Collard. Right. In his pocket, I found a ticket stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. Taking the ticket meant I tampered with the evidence. There was no going back now. That's obviously a gun shot. Carchon had been shot. Okay. I closed his eyes. It was the least I could do for the poor fellow. Okay, right. Oh, there's a hairpin up there. It was one of my hair clips. My favourite, in fact. It must have fallen when I was knocked down. Okay, right. Oh, it's like a inventory so far. Yes, thank you very much. So we've got, oh, so we've got his pass. And a hair clip. Okay. And clearly, there's nothing else in the body, so let's have a look at the window. You know, doors. Ah, there's the. A small round piece of glass had been cut out of the pane. So clearly. This was a professional job. So yeah, clearly open the door using that. Okay. Anything in the bookcase? The bookcase was filled with obscure first editions. Okay, nothing. Um, generally, when you look at point clip you generally have a look at all the things in the room just in case you miss anything. A bust of Pierre Carchon, humble servant of La France. Okay, right, let's get out of this room. There's clearly nothing else in there. The police could turn up at any minute. Somewhere there were clues to the murder, and I needed to find them. Okay, so, oh, there's a, is that a tapestry? Let's have a look. A medieval pageant. Original, no doubt. The tapestry must have cost a fortune. There you go, tapestry. Right, let's have a look at the table. Let's see if this is on the table that's going to give us any clues. A Louis XIV table with an antique cloth. The Melder had taste. But hey, with a husband that rich, taste is easy. <laughs> oh! Let's pick up the cloth. Uh, a beautiful cloth had been draped over the table. It was embroidered with an unusual cross. Yes, yeah, so let's pick it up. I reckoned that cloth might just turn out to be useful. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Oh, there's a hole. There was a tiny hole in the tabletop. Part of the inlay had been chipped away. Mm. 
I'm guessing a key would be too big for it, so let's use the pin on it. Aha! Uh -huh. Ah, Nico, you are just so damn good at this stuff. <laughs> what do you think? She's getting all of her ideas from a higher power. What do you Instead think? Instead of comforting Imelda, I was ransacking her flat. Why? Because, because you're um... there was something going on here, and I had to get answers before the cops arrived. And hey, she'd been rude to me, so she had it coming. Uh, I was going to say you robbing thinking bastard, but that also works. <laughs> Imelda had talent, but I certainly wasn't going to tell her that. What is that? It was a tube of... Acrylic paint, okay. No idea why it would be important, but if it says it's able to pick up, it's clearly Just the important. Colour I was after for my bathroom. I'm sorry, I have to go. Someone is. Young lady, what are you doing? Oh, this paint. <laughs> it's my favourite <laughs> colour. For God's sake, keep the damn stuff. <laughs> That's the least of our worries. Well, I think it's time we spoke to Amelda. See what she knows. Um, maybe she'll be able to tell us. Imelda looked shocked, but still every bit as hostile. Okay, let's go and interrogate her. Excuse me, madame. Yes? Oh, what do we do first? Don't know who that is, but... Um, we can ask about the mine or Pierre Cochon. Uh, I think obviously we're going to ask about her husband first. I'm so sorry if you're lost, madam. No, you're not. You're a journalist. Journalists don't feel sorry. Mm. Not true. We shall see. Why did your husband send for me? What did he want to discuss? I have no idea. His business was his business. He never told you anything? No. And frankly, I preferred it that way. <laughs> right. Okay, let's ask about the mime and then obviously the mystery man. Why would a mime want to kill your husband? Pierre had plenty of enemies. Half the husbands in Paris for a start. <laughs> Who's this mystery man? How did your husband know my father? Oh. I have no idea. You didn't know him? Thierry Collard? Pierre knew a lot of people I didn't know, most of them women. Oh, this is quite oh, a scoop oh. for you. I suppose you're already inventing the headlines. Oh, what Just a bitch. Because I'm a journalist. Don't patronise me. You're all cut from the same cloth. Oh, double bitch! Do you have any bitch. moral sense at all? Ho 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 ho! Oh, there's a, there's there is a there's a little uh, option here. Do I be nice or do I give a hell? I think I'll give a hell because she was being a double crossing bitch there. I certainly don't let it get in the way of a good story. I admire your loyalty to your profession. The police will be here soon, Madame. Is there anybody you would like me to contact? Family, friends? No. I have no family. Pierre and I were... He was all I had, really. Not much, was it? The dutiful wife. That was my role. He never talked, never let me in. I know one thing, madame. What? If you want to find out who killed your husband, then you let me do the job, not the police. Why? How do I know I can trust you? Let's be nice to her, let's not be a bitch. Your husband invited me here today because he needed me. I think he knew somebody wanted to kill him, and he knew I could help. I doubt it was your database he was after. You're wrong. I was onto his killers already, I am sure of it. Please, you owe it to him. I don't know. <laughs> All I need is a few more minutes to look around before the police come. I think perhaps you do have a moral sense. Of sorts. You're not a very good liar, Nico Collard. And perhaps Pierre really did think that you could help. Of course it wouldn't have stopped him seducing you, too. Here, take this. It's the key to the drawing room next to the library at the end of the hall. It was Pierre's room. I rarely went in there. I couldn't. I was too scared of what I might find. Right, so a secret room. Thank you. I promise you won't regret this. I love secret rooms. Right, let's go and investigate. Well, the diary is telling me that it's obviously uh, an updated entry. We don't need to keep on looking at that, so uh, let's just head straight for that secret room at the end of the hall. 
And let's go snooping around. See if we can find some more clues. Now we were getting somewhere. Oh yes, let's go in. Right, now we're in here. Let's see if I can remember what to do. Right, so we got a painting here. The painting showed the cachons together, in love. As the poet said, the past is a different country. Or did okay. I read that in a fortune cookie? <laughs> right, uh, there's a button here, so let's press it. There was the very faintest of clicks. Okay. Ah, safe. Behind the picture was a safe. But we need a key. <laughs> right. The safe was locked. I needed the key. Ah, oh, is this the key? It is. Ah, uh, voila. What is this? There was a strange stone cylinder in the safe. Ooh, in up. the safe was some kind of artifact. Okay. There were strange symbols on its surface. It looked like the printer's blocks I'd made at art school. If there was one thing I'd learned about symbols, they are always important. But these symbols scratched into stone were impossible to read. I needed to find a way of printing them. At least the stone was round. But what could I use for ink? And what could I print on? Sure, I was stealing, but I knew Imelda didn't know about the artifact. And Carchon was past caring. Yes, because he's dead. Right. It's a bit obvious what I need to do now. Let's go to the table. So it's glad I picked up that paint, I suppose. As expected, the desk was yet another priceless antique yawn. The blotter and in tray had clearly been placed with mathematical precision. Oh, My heart skipped a beat. It was a carved elephant. But not just any carved elephant. It had been made by my father. I knew for certain because in my apartment I had its exact twin. Carved into a box he had made. So Cochon had known my father. They really must have been friends. Right, so... Let's put paint in the tray. I'd spread blue paint over the bottom of the tray. It was ruined. I was a very bad, bad girl. But what? also quite a clever one. <laughs> Modest. Right, let's put... Oh, God. Blech. Let's put this thing here. Um, no. What? Yes. Um, no. <sighs> okay. Right. Let's do that instead. Rub the stone thing in the... Uh, I rolled the oh. artifact in the paint until it was completely coated. Right, okay. I'm guessing now I put that on the um, paint. No. An antique. Not. I didn't need a sheet of blotting paper. Not while it was blank. Uh, oh, of course. I've got to spread it on the paper. Such a doofus. Genius. The roller and the paint worked just as I planned, but what did it say? Subduance S D S S D S S. No idea. It was some kind of coded message. It read, "Oh, subjudice." Subjudice. Um. I may not have learned a lot as a journalist, but that was a term I knew well. It means a legal case that is before the courts. Below it was a sequence of letters. That made no sense. Okay. I suddenly realized there was a connection between the boat ticket and the coded message. The boat ticket was stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. The oh. Conciergerie on the Ile de la Cité by the river housed the ancient law courts. Uh -huh. so, Subjudice 
could in this case mean literally under the law courts, below the conciergerie. Right. Have a look. Oh, right. Okay, SDS, SDS, right. What does that mean? Right, I suppose we're going to head to the La Conciergerie. That button do. So let's get out of here. Right, River Santa, Santa Vor Voorhees is welcome. You are just, you know, you're in the you're photo, you're game bombing, whatever you want to call it. Madame Cachon, uh, please call me Imelda. We hardly need the formalities now, do we? Oh, another question about her father. Right, let's do Did this. Did Cachon say nothing to you about my father? No, I'm sorry, he never mentioned him. Okay, let's we ask her about some of these items. I was confident that Imelda wouldn't recognise the patterns. Okay, let's just head off. I was sure that there was more to find. I just had to keep looking. Okay. I thought of leaving, but was sure there was more to find. What could there possibly be left? Mm. This is something I missed in the room. I suppose it means I'm going to have to go back in there now, isn't it? Bloody hell. Bloody Nora. What is in this room? I didn't need the lights. This wasn't the time for me to lie on this so though it is very popular. Popular for her. I didn't need to take the leather holder with me. So what why well, don't I go I don't get the cloth was embroidered with an unusual symbol. What else? Oh, oh! I, I decided to take the. I was pretty sure. I... And besides, all this opulence was making me pine for my regular life of poverty. This was a huge story. It was also one heck of a puzzle with a lot of pieces missing. But I was going to crack it, and if I could just remember the name of that fancy prize you get for being an ace journalist, I was definitely going to win it this time. <laughs> right. So was that whole escapade just for an elephant? Oh dear. I'll be a bit miffed if it is. <laughs> I mean, what is an elephant going to do? I'm sure it'll be important later, but at the moment it doesn't seem to be blurring anything out at the moment. Elephant. Right, let's 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 uh let's move towards the door, eh? Get out of here, and um, probably end it there for part one. I think I couldn't leave without saying goodbye to Imelda. Uh, I really have to say goodbye to that miserable woman. More of a bitch. Did you find anything useful? This carving. Do you know anything about it? It was Pierre's. What does the statue have to do with? Please, I need to know. He was given it by a friend. Something to do with Africa. He never explained any more. No, but I think it was important to him. Always on display. Why? It was carved by my father. Oh, I see. I didn't know. Imelda, I will do everything I can to find the killer. Thank you, my dear. And if the police ask... Don't worry. You were never here. Subjudice was the key. I was going to have to find a way under the conciergerie. I decided to head straight for the quayside on the Ile de la Cité. 
If there was a way of getting under the conciergerie, it would have to be from there.